Hello everyone and welcome to modeling a simple pod like spacecraft in Blender. Somebody had been asking me in my YouTube comments for a tutorial on how to model such a thing and how to bring it into Kerbal Space Program, but I'll focus on just modeling it in this video. And I decided to do this mainly because the launch of CST100 is coming up and I don't have a CST100 model, uh, so I might as well. I modeled Dragon 2 as well, so. Yep, we are going to try that out. I have screencast keys on, so you'll be seeing what I'm pressing. The first thing we need to do is add a cylinder, and there are other ways to get to this, but I'm not going to bother. I already have it at the right radius. For CSD100, we want a 4.56 meter diameter, and since that's the diameter, you cut it in half, and that's how you get the radius. In fact, if you don't know already, you can type in 4.56 and to go divide by 2 here, and it'll give it to you, so you don't have to even calculate it, though being able to calculate it in your head is handy. Uh, vertices, uh, it depends on how much detail you want. I actually probably want to bump that up quite a lot. I'm going to go for 72. So we're going to have a lot of uh, data here, and that's going to allow me to cut windows in and stuff like that. After all, I mean, I think we've got a lot of tolerance for polygons as far as this is concerned. It's a fairly simple shape and we don't have a whole lot of bits except for what we need to cut out of it like RCS ports and windows so this should be alright. After that we're going to go into the front view and as you can see from the screencast keys I did number uh, pad 5 and 1 to get into that and so we are now in orthographic view and I'm going to drag in a reference photo and this is from the Starliner subreddit and it was by uh, let me just check Blue Galaxy Designs so that is who gave that, and I should be in object mode, and drag and drop. Okay, and since we have scaled the cylinder to the right size, we can just use that as a reference, or say the right diameter anyway. Uh, we can use that as a reference to scale the diagram, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to scale this up to make sure it fits the cylinder well. And what we need is uh, this length right here. But of course, it's being covered by the umbilical, which is sad. And sometimes these other views may not uh, may not be at the same scale. So, uh, but I don't think I'm going to use them necessarily. Uh, we'll just have a general idea of them. We can see where the solar panels are supposed to be in that. But I'm not going to rearrange them. Just I want the pods aspect ratio correct. That's all. And so we're not going to bottle with the other views. Though if you have a more complicated thing that you're trying to model, you might want to get duplicates of this particular image sized in the other views. This is looking about right if I take a look at how much extra is over here. It depends. I mean, obviously this is a fuzzy line here. So we're just going to move that down like that. And there's a straight bit here. We'll leave that be. Okay, so Z4 was to make the cylinder transparent, Z6 to make it opaque, and we can move the reference image back for now. It'll still be fine once we go into orthographic view with the numpad keys, and Z4, we can select the... I want to select the cylinder, and we can select the top face there, make sure to move it up to the top and S to resize it down to the scale that we want it and the scale is about right I mean we can see it matching the slope it depends on where on the fuzziness of the diagram we want to judge it by but we know it's the right size so we'll just leave it be and we're going to press E to extrude and create that layer there and then we're probably going to want the heat shield so we're going to press E to extrude and we're going to say that the heat shield is going to go down to here-ish. You can maybe reference other diagrams to see how that works out. And we're going to scale it down. We're going to add an edge loop, loop cut. And we're going to press S to scale that up. Scale that up. A whole lot of loop cuts to get the shape of the heat shield. Let's go into opaque view so you can see. Well, that seems, I, I think uh, the heat shield for for Starliner is very pointy. 
So this seems like it's not deep enough. So press 3 for the face select instead of the edge select. And then I'm going to just sort of drag this down. Maybe it's more like this. And then 2, holding down Alt and selecting that will get you that edge. And then again, holding down Alt, clicking to select that edge. And that looks a little bit better. Um, maybe the curvature. We'll add more loops uh, to refine it later. So something like that. And then there is a nose cone at the top. So what we're going to do is, now we've got a huge end gone here. We'll worry about that later. You'll notice uh, we limit the end gone down here for the heat shield. It's just this tiny little thing, but we could have turned it into triangles or something like that. But we're ultimately going to just sort of inset it in order to deal with it. And then it's not going to cause too many problems. Uh, in particular, there's a docking port to worry about, and basically there's a hole in the spacecraft at that point. So we'll be getting rid of the face, uh, potentially. I mean, it depends on how you want to do it, whether you want that part to be hollow or not. But we can get rid of the face if we want to. And so uh, selecting with three, face select, and clicking, uh, we are going to do Shift D to duplicate it in order to create the nose cap. And then I'm going to press P to separate it. So separate selection. And now you see uh, we have just this here. And the original model still has its uh, circle. So we have two of them. And going out of edit mode, I'm going to select this circle. And I'm going to try and match the curvature. We've got it there, but we don't have it on this model here. I'm going to go into edit mode, select this, go into this orthographic view, and E. And this time I'm just estimating. And just like I did for the heat shield. If you've got other reference images, you can use that, those. You can also, if you don't like the location of an edge loop, let's say we want this one in the middle of these two rows instead of closer to the top, we can push G twice, GG, and then slide it down. So let's say I, I don't need two loops this close together, GG, and slide it down and rescale. And that might be a little bit too shallow. That, the cone that they have there is a little bit pointier. So Press 2 for edge select and then hold down Alt in order to select the whole edge. Alt to select the whole edge and move it up. While we're in the orthographic view, it'll automatically only go... Uh, well, we're just pulling the z-axis anyway. So... But you have to be careful to make sure you're doing things in the right axis. And you're not accidentally moving things in a different axis. I'll take that for now. And we can just uh, shade smooth. So there's the auto smooth method. And I guess we'll do auto smooth. So we can go into the this one, object data properties, normals, auto smooth. And so shade smooth, auto smooth. And that does it for the whole thing. And we're going to separate off the heat shield. And then we're going to start naming things. So. Uh, the heat shield is right here, and so in transparent view, and we're going to select faces, and we can hold down Shift and Alt to select rows of faces. Make sure to get the bottom one, and then press P, separate selection. So we have the pod, we have the cap, and we have the heat shield. And then Z6. Now the heat shield is not very distinct right now. We'll improve upon that. The pod doesn't have bottom right now, so let's just fix that. So 2 to select edges. Alt, click this one. Press F to fill. Inset so that we've got mostly this surface covered with 
quads instead of n-gons. We just have one n-gon in the center. And that'll do for now. Okay, well, now there's the interior business. Let's remove the cap for a sec. So right now it's very solid. Now it has the docking port at top, but we'll worry about that later. There is this line here and in the window. Uh, let's actually add some geometry so that we can get the window right. So transparent, let's get this line here. So just a new edge loop there. You can see this line here. So let's make a edge loop there. Uh, we might as well have another edge loop right here. I'm not being very spare about my polygons again. Uh, there is a line here. This part actually has um, some tiles. So HRSI tiles. So we'll have that there. And why don't we also get the the what you got service module set up. Service module is going to have a hole that fits the heat shield. So what we're actually going to do, uh, uh, let's finish modeling the heat shield so that we can make that properly. I sort of feel it actually extends all the way down to that line, but I think I'll, let's say to that line and edge select instead. Okay, that satisfies me for now. So form the heat shield and let's move its center. I've used shift and right click to move the 3D cursor to the general location I want the center of the heat shield, but I don't want it on the edge here. I want it uh, at that Z location, the blue axis, but I want it in the center. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna tell the heat shield, okay, object set origin to 3D cursor. And then now its center is there. The pod center is right there. It probably ought to be lower. And the cap, if we take a look, the cap center is also where the pod was because we built it out of the pod. So same thing, I'm gonna sort of shift, right click there to move the cursor, but then use this, uh, it's under the view menu to get to zero, zero, except for the Z point. And then object set origin to 3D cursor. You could also make note of this these Z locations because you're eventually going to use those for the attachment nodes in Kerbal Space Program. So when we, but we can figure that out later. Okay, so let's get rid of the pod for a sec. I wanted to make the service module, then we'll go back to the pod. Now the heat shield doesn't have a top. We'll do that, deal with that the same way that we dealt with it with the pod. We will press F for fill, I to inset, and we'll just inset it really deeply for now. We'll add further details later. So bring the heat shield back and the pod back and we'll just make a cylinder. So add mesh cylinder down, scale it up. We'll leave it there for now and we're going to delete this face. Alt click that to select a whole bunch of them, go back into there and E to extrude straight, we want straight up, so we don't want to, make sure you don't extrude twice and press E twice, by the way. Now uh, we want to pull it straight up using that. And then we're gonna press E again now, uh, and just left click to confirm it. And then we're going to move another bunch and then press S to scale in. So it can sort of hug the heat shield there. Okay, and then that part is going to be its own thing. And then, uh, here, this is actually inset, and so I for inset, and then E to extrude in, and then we're gonna have stuff in here. Uh, that's not very apparent from these views, but I'll use other reference images to figure that out. So I do know that it's inset, and actually the entire bottom part has a different texture. We also have side pods with uh, pitch yaw and roll thrust, uh, pitch yaw and roll thrusters, yeah. So we'll have to keep that in mind. And, oh, uh, our bottom is a little bit lower than what we have here. So I'm going to, this diagram doesn't have it exactly the way that they have it in other diagrams. Uh, like for instance, the escape thrusters, that's what these are down here, are actually tilted a bit in other diagrams. So this might not be the best, best reference. I'm gonna move this, sorry, I'm gonna use that to move this to where the radiators are. You can see these lines, that's the radiator thing. 
And we're going to launch another thing on the outside at the same location. And I'll move the bottom a little bit. So to do that, we go into face select mode, deselect everything, alt A to deselect everything, C to circle select this bunch, or you could use box select and then move that up a little bit. There's a whole bunch of texture stuff at the bottom, but we'll leave that there. We've got the side pods that we'll need to deal with, but anyway, that's the start of our service module. So let's just uh, rename this, uh, double click to rename service. Oh, I'll just call it SM. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the light and the camera because we're not rendering it in uh, Blender. So that's not necessary. So we've got that stuff. And let's take a look at each thing individually. Uh, so just the service module, if you want to look at just the thing that you've got selected, you can push the slash key on the num number pad. And so now we don't have that inner loop, um, inner edge. But I actually want to solidify this. Uh, we want inner faces as well as outer faces. Let's make sure that our normals are pointing the right way because we've sort of made this in a weird way. So these little lines indicate which direction the texture will be facing. So it'll look invisible from the inside and it'll only be visible from the outside. We want the inside to also be visible. So to do this, we are going to do two, I'm going to fill this F to fill so that we have a surface. Remember, this is the surface that's below the heat shield. So make sure that we have that. See, this is the one that's touching the bottom of the heat shield. So yeah, and again, the backslash key on the numpad to just focus on this bit. And I'm going to inset a little bit. And then we can sort of see this lip that we've made here. I'm going to select that loop, I'm going to select this loop, and I'm going to do bridge edge loops. So edge, bridge, edge, edge loops. Okay, it disappeared those. Well, that's fine. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, that's fine. And we're going to select this edge loop, and then we're going to fill it again. Okay, and I'm just going to make it like that. And if you are pressed for but if you are worried about the polygon count, you might not want to do it exactly like this. But anyway, that's the start of our service module. Let's get the rest of the view. Okay, so similarly, we need to solidify stuff like the cap so that it has an inside. Otherwise, when it separates, you'll be seeing something that's invisible or something like that. So um, I think the cap just outright separates. It's just an ascent cover and they just jettison it. So but we still do want an inside. Now, um, let's focus just on it. And uh, let's, uh, so we've got this surface here that we don't really want. There are other ways to make an inside. We'll do that with the pod. We'll use solidify to do that. But let's get into tab for edit mode. Sorry, I haven't mentioned that before. Uh, all our normals are right. And so here, the reason I'm not doing solidify on this is so that we don't we don't really want all these polygons on the inside we're not going to see it very often so i'm just going to inset it i for inset e to extrude upward and again it's better to just pull this or you could just press z to focus on the z axis and now we don't have that many normals here i mean, not normals polygons so that'll be spare so basically in transparent view, you can sort of see that it's actually a cone on the inside, but that probably will not matter. The docking port sort of nubs are conical anyway, so we sort of move the edge like that, and then it's okay. Backslash again, and we're back. So now the pod. So we'll just assume that the cap is done. We'll have to do the collider for these things separately. And the service module, we can do shade smooth and then auto smooth as well. And then we'll hide it for now. And we'll also hide the heat shield. So just the pod, which is of course the complicated thing. I mean, if you take a look at the top view, there's all sorts of little lines even at the top of it. So why don't we start with that? Three inset. There's probably gonna be an edge where it connects to the nose cone. So something like that. And then 
the docking port area is going to be its own separate thing. So I for inset, we get it to the docking port edge size. That's that's good enough. Okay, and then conceptually there'll be an aperture in the center. Uh we're probably gonna in Kerbal Space Program just be putting a docking port on this. So I don't know if modeling it is a good idea. We'll just be using the stock docking ports. I'll leave that be for now. So we're going to work on the window. So, and then there's the side hatch. So this is the side hatch here and there's the window there. And then we've got all the thrusters. Uh, we're going to start off with the window. Some images have it very square. I'll keep it a little bit rounded. And we're going to go out at mode and we need a reference object. So we're going to add a cube. Okay, so for the interior for this, because it's complicated, we are going to just use the solidify modifier. So this add modifier solidify. And it, what's happened is not very apparent, but you can sort of see that we've got double the lines everywhere. Let's uh, not have that. So here is how it is right now. And when we add solidify, it adds those lines, and they are one it's one centimeter thick right now, which is probably all right. That's probably what we want. The important thing here is with the normals, and we have to go into edit mode to see that. And the normals here, we have the ones on the outside, but now we also have ones on the inside. Make the modifier happen, we have to do that in object mode. So let's apply the modifier and then go into edit mode. You can see now we have faces on the interior and that's gonna represent our the interior of our model and uh, the, the IVA view if you're doing that in Kerbal Space Program. So we're going to be texturing that completely differently than the outside and we'll just use all that. In fact, we'll separate it off um, right after we do the cuts. So we're going to have to, and the interior, we want to make sure that we have room for the thrusters and all. So if we look in this view, uh, down here we have all these thrusters. If we have it just like this, there's no place for those thrusters to have to exist. Basically, this is the this is the cabin on the inside. So actually, for the interior, we want to select this loop here and these and sort of inset them in a bit so that there's room for the thrusters to exist. So I want to actually press S and scale them in. So it ends up sort of straightish. There could be other reference images to get a sense of the exact shape of the pod, but I think it is mostly, they, it goes straight down past a certain point. And, you know, we could refine that later and move it, but basically this is the interior of our pod right now. And if we take a look on the side view, uh, now where the ports are, I, I think it's not quite enough space for them. Uh, basically, it's like that triangle area. Maybe want a little bit more. So I'm just going to select these three. It's going to be fine for now. All right. So that'll be the interior, but we need to cut the window through both. So that's why I'm doing, I was doing the interior right now, but we have that cube ready. Now it's at an angle in the reference image. Let's take a look at the top view to sort of get a sense of whether we've got it basically right there. Okay, let's scale it down. And then we can switch to local to get its local coordinates. And since it seems to be more tall than wide, we'll do S for scale and then X for that axis. So you can see it's sort of like that, but not quite. But we want those rounded edges anyway. The top in that image seems to be smaller so I'm going to scale that down. And overall, we don't need it this deep. So I'll just scale like that. And of course, it is tilted in this direction as well. 
so we'll make it sort of normal to the surface and so it's sort of a window like that let's see it's sort of you can sort of get a sense that it's looking the way it ought to but it's a little bit finicky but then again the image that we have here isn't exactly matching other images of CSD 100 so it's complicated okay so selecting with two that edge that edge this edge this edge control B uh, for bevel just a little bit and mini segments okay so it's sort of like that let's say and what we want to do is make sure that it's gonna cut through both the exterior and interior and if at all possible uh, when we select our pod by the way you can select two things at once and press tab so you can see their relationship to each other See, I want the window to be sort of closer to those cuts. Uh, now, the cuts have a little bit of buffer around the window. So we'll probably, let's reorient the window just a little bit. Okay, you can see it's not quite lined up, right? There we go. And I'm going to scale it up just a little bit. Uh, I feel like it's going to get irritated by that edge though so maybe I'll leave some buffer there because we're going to do a boolean and boolean is always finicky we're going to want the edges as close to the cutting object as possible and gg to move it uh, well we want to be in that mode gg to move it up and down on the slope without Okay, without distorting it. Okay, so now we've got this object. Let's see how it works. Pod, add modifier, boolean. And then we can select the object. Well, we can just select cube here. We could use the eyedropper if we have a whole lot of objects. But okay, if we disappear the cube, we see the cut. Okay, so that's the window. And again, uh, some of the uh, images have a square window. I like this better. So there's just a... I, I decide that I don't care about reality anymore, but I'm going to make it the way I like it. So this is a nice little window here. It's probably more artistic than the reality, but um, so, but we're also going to keep the cube. And actually, now let's just check that our, when we apply this Boolean, we don't get a whole bunch of weird geometry. So I'm just going to go pod apply. It's a uh, week we could fix it and make sure uh, these are end gons right now these guys but We can probably deal with it the way it is it doesn't seem to be causing any shading problems But if we need to we can uh, Fix them up and sort of connect things together, but it looks all right for now. We'll deal with those end gons There are some end gons. We're just gonna deal with Okay, so having applied that we're going to call this the window, and it'll be textured differently than everything else because it'll be a window color. SY to resize. I want it oversized to make sure it cut properly. Uh, that seems to have gotten distorted. Distorted. Hold on. Anyway, I'll unskew it the hard way. So I'm just sort of tweaking its placement in here. Okay, well, I'm not super duper happy with the window right now, but I'll take it. And now we're going to deal with the hatch. And that's another complication. 